Department of the Treasury to help us out on that one. Um, our next speaker is going to focus on a topic that's uh, prevalent really in the whole conference today, and that's the topic of privacy and security. Uh, and, you know, exactly how we should uh, determine the federal government's role in, in protecting that. Uh, this speaker is Cameron Carey, who's the general counsel of the Department of Commerce. Um, he's had a distinguished career in all aspects of uh, intellectual property, patent reform, also security and privacy, telecommunications and privacy. Um, and he's now acting as, I guess, chair of the Department's uh, Privacy Council. So he's the perfect person to uh, enlighten us on this subject. Uh, Mr. Carey, please join us. Thank you. Uh, well, good morning. Uh, it's uh, a pleasure and an honor to be here. You are a hearty bunch. Uh, Rick, I want to thank you for that introduction uh, and also for the role of uh, uh, the Congressional uh, Internet Caucus and uh, uh, the Advisory Committee in forging a, forging a forward looking, uh, nonpartisan, and innovation enabling internet economy. Uh, Rick was one of the founders of the caucus, uh, a bipartisan group that included people like Rick Boucher, uh, Pat Leahy, Conrad Burns, beginning a decade plus uh, of dialogue that has enriched the legislative process uh, with laws that have enabled the vital contribution of the internet to our economy, to our social lives, and to our democracy. I'm also grateful to Jerry Berman, the chair, chair for life of the advisory committee, for his leadership in bringing together the commercial world, civil society, and government around principles of openness and constitutional values of freedom of expression and of privacy. Such values have uh, steered internet policy in the United States uh, in the right direction. And the kind of multi-stakeholder policy making that uh, Jerry Berman has championed sets an example for us at the Department of Commerce uh, as we address uh, such issues as privacy, cybersecurity, copyright, and the global free flow of expression that are critical to the lasting economic and social impact of the internet. Today, the internet has become unparalleled in its ability to drive US innovation and growth and is a vital engine of economic recovery. Annual global and online transactions uh, uh, are estimated at $10 trillion. Just last Friday, the Commerce Department uh, released the December 2010 advanced monthly sales for retail service. Our report shows that in 2010, online and catalog sales grew at an annual rate of 13.6%, almost double that of other retail sales categories. And in the third quarter, e-commerce sales grew 4% compared to overall retail sales growth of just 0.8%. And statistics like these don't measure the full impact of the internet. The digital economy connected by the internet reaches much more than just e-commerce. Between 1998 and 2008, the number of domestic IT jobs grew 28%, uh, 26%, four times faster than U.S. employment as a whole, and IT employment is projected to increase another 22% uh, by 2018. From business planning to producing products and services and delivering them to customers, these jobs are generating new ways of doing business, and they're changing the ways that we communicate uh, with each other, as well as how we govern ourselves. The Obama administration is seeking to harness this transformative potential, whether it's through health information technology, smart grid, greater access to educational resources, an open, innovative, ubiquitously accessible internet has a critical role to play 
in our economy and our society. At the Commerce Department, uh, the internet has long uh, been important to our stewardship of technology and communications, as reflected in the Clinton administration 1999 framework that has guided internet policy over the past decade. Today, the internet is central to our mission to promote domestic and international commerce and to retool the economy for sustained U.S. leadership in the 21st century. In April, Secretary Gary Locke established a department-wide internet policy task force uh, aimed to address key uh, internet uh, policy challenges. And specifically, he directed uh, our task force uh, to look at establishing uh, norms that promote innovative uses uh, of the internet in four key areas. Uh, these are uh, internet privacy, cybersecurity, protecting uh, intellectual property uh, in a balanced way, and ensuring the global free flow of information. The department-wide task force includes a strong team of experts across uh, five uh, agencies of the Department of Commerce, National Telecommunications uh, and Information uh, Administration, the International Trade Administration, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, uh, and the Office of Secretary. As we approach these challenging issues, we are guided uh, by two lodestars. The first is trust. About 18 months ago, I attended a think tank uh, policy conference where participants, uh, a cross-section of uh, business, academia, civil society, and government from across, a pol across the political spectrum, identified risks and drivers uh, for, in various scenarios for broadband development. And regardless of the scenario, whether it was rosy or dark, each group working independently identified privacy and security as key drivers and key risks. And each one independently framed the issue the same way as trust. The importance of trust cannot be understated. Enterprises of all kinds rely on the willingness of consumers and business partners to entrust them with private information. And in turn, the latter have to be able to trust that the information that they provide will stay both private and secure. In a world where commerce and trade operate on the exchange of digital information, security and privacy are two sides of the same coin, and that coin uh, is essential currency. Our second guiding principle uh, is a commitment to multi-stakeholder policy making. This multi-stakeholder process is modeled uh, on the institutions and the architecture that so successfully built the internet itself. Uh, a network of businesses, uh, uh, academics, civil society, consumers, as well as the government. That's the kind of dynamic, uh, diverse, uh, and adaptable regulatory system we believe is needed to keep up uh, with rapidly changing technology uh, and enable uh, the innovation that that technology provides. Our approach recognizes a key role for government in convening stakeholders and leading the way uh, to policy solutions that protect the public interest as well as private profits. But pure government prescription is a prescription for failure. I'm going to focus today on privacy, but we believe that a similar model uh, applies across the range of issues uh, uh, relating to the internet that we're dealing with at the Department of Commerce. But privacy has been our first order of business. We begin with a strong foundation. I don't think this audience 
needs any reminder how seriously Americans take privacy. Unlike many of our international uh, partners, uh, we have rejected any national identity card system. A recent study reported that 65% of adult internet users are taking steps to increase their privacy protections on social networking sites, even though conventional wisdom suggests that, that younger internet users are casual about uh, their privacy rights, as, as young people are casual about many things. Surveys show that young adults also are taking steps uh, to protect their privacy online. Privacy protections are deeply embedded in our legal system. Uh, a fundamental right against government intrusion uh, is enshrined in our Bill of Rights. We have a strong statutory protections in sensitive sectors. Uh, we have a world-class privacy regulator in the Federal Trade Commission and a range of common law and state protections. So our Department of Commerce Internet Policy Task Force is taking a fresh look at this framework and asking uh, about the relationships uh, between policy uh, and privacy, uh, asking how we can ensure that uh, we have privacy and simultaneously encourage continued innovation. We began by listening to companies, to trade groups, to civil society, uh, to academia. Last spring, uh, uh, we used these conversations as a basis for a notice of inquiry that posed a number of questions uh, about policy, privacy, innovation. Uh, we also held a symposium uh, on privacy and innovation with a broad cross-section of stakeholders. Based on what we learned, last month we issued uh, a set of policy recommendations as a Department of Commerce green paper. We identify it as a green paper, not uh, because of its environmental impact, uh, but because it represents green shoots rather than a final statement of policy, like the 1999 framework document that was based on another green paper, uh, our recommendations uh, and further questions uh, should ripen uh, into an Obama administration white paper. Our goal is to contribute to an administration position on information privacy and internet principles and to advance both the domestic and the global dialogues. Our green paper concludes that the time has come to strengthen our privacy framework. This is an area where there's a lot of convergence of consumer, business, and government interests. Consumers need transparency uh, and control. Businesses need certainty. Uh, they need affirmative US leadership internationally, and they need to maintain consumer trust. So here's what we've outlined. First, Americans need a privacy bill of rights to ensure that personal data on the internet is protected. Stronger enforcement is needed to maintain trust in the digital economy. To borrow from one of the responses to our notice of inquiry, baseline privacy rights are something consumers want, companies need, and the economy will appreciate. Baseline privacy protections based on internationally accepted fair information practice principles will build consumer trust uh, and give businesses in the United States more guidance about what's expected. We ask a series of questions about the content uh, of such fair, fair information uh, practice principles and how they should be enforced. Second. Above this baseline, multi-stakeholder groups must develop effective, consensus-based, enforceable codes of conduct in a wide variety of commercial contexts. The goal is to operate in a nimble, flexible way to address emerging online privacy issues, that, to make sure that consumers are protected and innovation 
can continue to flourish. Commerce Department is going to begin this process, and as new applications and services emerge, uh, for example, in the mobile or social networking uh, environments, we plan to convene stakeholders to hammer out rules of the road that will protect consumer expectations, uh, as well uh, as promote business models uh, and innovation. Let me be clear that this is not just self-regulation. As I said in my foreword uh, to the Green Paper, and Secretary Locke reiterated uh, when the document was announced, more than self-regulation is needed. This is part of a multi-layered approach to policymaking, conceptually a lot like the internet itself. Uh, as you know, the, the internet uh, uh, in its physical network uh, operates on baseline technical protocols like TCP IP or uh, domain name system um, and that apply to connect the entire world. But on top of this network, at the edge, uh, there's a dynamic uh, applications and content layer uh, that enables agile development uh, of innovative services and applications. So when we speak of voluntary enforceable codes, we're talking about a multi-stakeholder process uh, that rides on top of baseline privacy bill of rights. Uh, a process that can be as flexible, as dynamic, as the developing applications uh, and services that it will address. The resulting codes of conduct developed uh, in response to changing conditions by a consensual process but enforced at law by the Federal Trade Commission are the second layer of the multi-layer policymaking model. Industry, uh, consumer groups, Civil society and the United States government all will have important roles to play in ensuring a truly dynamic uh, privacy policy framework. Finally, we need robust uh, engagement with the international privacy community. The legal and policy framework surrounding the internet uh, is increasingly complex, both uh, domestically and internationally. In privacy, as in other areas, we must, governments must be able to protect their citizens. But we also need to avoid fragmented, unpredictable, or restrictive rules that frustrate innovation, block the free flow of information, and hamper the broad commercial success of the online environment. So this is a continuing conversation as we move forward uh, to an administration policy. Uh, on January 28th, our Internet Policy Task Force will receive comments on the Green Paper. These comments and other discussions will inform uh, the work of the White House uh, uh, Interagency Committee on Privacy and Internet Policy that I co-chair with Assistant Attorney General uh, Chris Schroeder. As we work to get uh, in short order uh, from green paper to white paper. I've been heartened by the comments of members of Congress from both parties that online privacy will be on the agenda in the next Congress. I, this caucus has shown over the years that enabling the internet uh, is a bipartisan concern. That uh, is true today. So we expect, uh, as we move forward, to have uh, a robust and active dialogue with Congress uh, and with stakeholders on privacy uh, and uh, uh, on internet policy, uh, on cybersecurity, on the free flow of information, uh, on intellectual property issues. Together, uh, we have an important task ahead of us to safeguard a universal internet 
as a medium of information and of commerce across the globe. Uh, I welcome the dialogue. I thank the Congressional Internet Caucus and the Advisory Committee, and I believe that working together, uh, we are up to that task. Thank you very much. If we have time for questions, I'm going to move. I know I mean, that's uh, a continuing uh, multi-stakeholder uh, process. Uh, that's part of the process uh, that we're engaged in uh, in the comments that, that we've put out to address exactly some of the kinds of questions uh, uh, that uh, you have, uh, have raised, uh, and, uh, including what the role of uh, the Federal Trade Commission should be in enforcing those. Uh, should it have rulemaking powers? Uh, um, you know, should it uh, uh, have uh, uh, direct uh, enforcement authority? Should there be legislation? Um, but you know, we, we do uh, expect, as part of this process, to flesh out the baseline privacy principles. Uh, um, uh, you know, and to answer uh, some of those questions. Uh, I also expect that, that some of the more detailed answers uh, uh, will be part of a multi-stakeholder process uh, as we move forward. Okay. Thank you very much. Rick, thank you, thank you very much. Oh, our pleasure. Okay. Thank you.